Did you know how to make the most out of Google Trends? So in this video, I'm going to share some of the great features and top use cases of Google Trends that you don't want to miss. Hey friends, Grace here. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. This is a channel where I share actionable tips and strategies all about digital growth. Now let's dive right in. The first one, choose the best content format for a topic. Google Trends has a really good features to give you the search interest for different search types. Web, YouTube, image, news, shopping, and these are the data sets that do not overlap, which means you can use it to refine your content strategies for different platforms. And personally, this is one of my favorite features. Now, for example, in your content strategy, you have chosen a broad topic, personal growth, and you're thinking which platform to focus for what format and subtopics. And then we can search for personal growth and pick worldwide and the past five years to see the trend. And now you can see it's a good topic because the trend is slightly going up. But did you notice there is a search type filter? By default, it is for web search. And now click to select, for example, YouTube search. And then you can see the trend is quite different from the web. Obviously, personal growth is an exploding topic on YouTube. It has a much higher interest above 80, and which means instead of building blog or web content for web, it's more recommend to do a video content on YouTube because it's exploding. And of course, you can also filter out a search type like image, news to see what's the trend. So you can decide what's the best content format to produce for that topic and on what platform. You can also scroll down a bit on the related queries to see what exactly some concrete topics we should deep dive. For example, personal growth tips, bugs. So I will talk more later in this video how to make the best use of this section. So keep watching. The next one, predict seasonality for promotion planning and content updates. With the trend data, obviously we know what topics to focus, but how you're gonna get ahead of the curve is also important. And that's why we want to do promotions, content updates before the trend starts to grow. And this is when Google Trends can help you to predict that. Now, suppose you run a e-commerce business and you're planning for Black Friday promotion, and then you can search for Black Friday. Pick the countries that your business is in, for example, United States. And then a very important step is to pick the past five years. So we're able to see the seasonality and trend. And now you can see the interest level goes peak for the Black Friday week. But you can also see that the trend starts to grow around early October. So it's the same pattern for the previous and the following years. And that means your promotion or related content needs to be ready and launched to the market by early October. And so your content is ready to serve as your audience starts searching around that time. Another way is to use this for content updates or planning. For example, some products definitely have a seasonality, let's say sunglasses. And now you can see the seasonality cycle and every year it starts around end March and goes to peak around mid June. And so if you have any existing content, or new content, so you're gonna ready it around that time and adjust your content calendar. And if you are planning for promotion, you can even select the shopping under the search type filter in order to show more relevant trends data. The next one, compare interest level between regions or countries. A really cool feature of Google Trends is that it allows you to compare topic interests between the regions side by side. And it is a super useful feature for local content strategy. For example, I'm running a daycare service in Canada and I wanna see the interest level and topic ideas between different provinces in Canada. And so I can better localize my content. And so now I search for daycare and pick British Columbia under Canada and the past five years. And now I'm going to add the same search term daycare. And then there is a three dots icon. So click the change filter. And now we can select the region we want to compare. And let's say Alberta. And now you can see generally Alberta has a greater interest than BC. And you can scroll down to see the related queries break down by the trending queries or the queries with the top interest. So you know which localized topic to build for these regions. For example, childcare, Montessori have higher interest in BC. So this is a good keywords to target for BC, but may not be the case for Alberta. 
Another useful way is under the interest by city view, you can also break down which cities or subregions you should focus first by the interest level. You can click to show by list view, and then you can see which city has the highest interest. It can be helpful if you're planning which city to open your business based on the interest level or demand or the location to place as. So make sure you make the best use of these features. A bonus tip is you should always compare Apple by Apple. That means compare a country to another country, a region to another region, a topic to another topic, so you can get the most accurate and relevant comparison result. The next one, find new topics or content ideas as part of your keyword research. Sometimes you may have identified a good broad topic, but still we need to expand and build different content around these broad topics in order to build the topical authority. And Google Trends is useful to help you to find these potential related content ideas and refine your content strategy further. Now suppose we have chosen a keyword leadership. So targeting United States and we can scroll down to the related topics and related queries section. And by default, Google Trends shows you the rising view, which means these topic or queries had the biggest increase in search interest for the time period with the percentage shown. And any increase more than 5,000%, Google classified them as a breakout. So usually these are new or had very low search volume before. And so you can see some potential topics we can expand like women in leadership or queries like inclusive leadership, thought leadership. So we can create a separate piece of content with these as the target keywords. And now another useful way is to switch to the top view. And so these are the topics and queries with the highest search volume for the selected period. And they're also useful as unlike those breakout queries, it gives you an idea what are the keywords or topics that are more evergreen, more sustainable, and have gained the most interest for a long time. And so we can click on any of them to double check the trend. For example, this query, team leadership, also noted a trending curve, so where we can build a separate piece of content around this in order to capture the demand. So make sure you make the best use of this section for your topic research and build your content strategy. If you want the step-by-step -step guide on how to create a content strategy, you can also check out my other video. The next one, sense check a trending topic. Sometimes you may find a topic which is trending, which is great, right? But a trending topic doesn't always mean it's a popular topic with high stretch demand. And this is when Google Trends can help you to confirm that without using a keyword tool, but just comparing with a well-known popular topic. For example, let's use the query generative AI. Again, select worldwide and the past five years. And obviously we can tell it's a really trending keyword, but does it mean it's popular enough? So we're gonna compare it with ChatGPT, for example, because everyone knows ChatGPT is super, super popular. And now you can see it's really not compatible with ChatGPT at all. And then you know, although generative AI may seem a trending keyword, it may not be the best target keyword because we also need to consider the popularity and of course, relevance. And then perhaps let's add another related queries, for example, Gemini. And now you can see, although there's still a big gap, but you can see it is obviously a better topic or query than generative AI because first is trending and second is interest level is more comparable. And it is also very useful features if you need to choose a keyword variation to target between two keywords or two topics which are very similar. So this is the true power of Google Trends because the interest level values are normalized across a scale from one to 100. So you can always compare up to five topics or queries side by side and give you a tangible idea if that's a really trending and also a popular topic to choose. The next one, use categories to refine context. Sometimes a query or topics may be relevant to multiple contexts and Google Trends give you the options to refine the search category to get the most relevant trends data. And it is useful if your chosen topic is broad and can associate with different contexts. And this helps you to refine the topic ideas. For example, I am doing content research around mental health for YouTube. And obviously it is a trending topic recently. And I can see is related topics like nursing, 
men's mental health pandemic. But because mental health can be associated with many things, it can be related to health, people, science, or even shopping. So let's say I'm running a health channel and I want to filter data that's only within the health category. And then I can use the category filter and select health. And now you can see the trend is much more obvious and it suddenly starts to grow around early 2023. And now under the related topics and query sections, I can see more relevant data that I should focus for the channel. For example, mental disorder, mental illness, depression, mental health video. And so think about what are the main category or broad topic that your content strategy is forcing to and use this category filter in order to get more relevant data so you can refine your content strategy further. The next one, find e-commerce product ideas. With just using Google Trends, you are already able to find products or merchandising ideas for your e-store without using a keyword tool. And it is a very powerful use case that you don't wanna miss. For example, I run a fashion e-commerce store and I have a hoodies product category. And I can now use Google Trends to give me what are the different types of hoodies I should source and sell on my e-store. So now search for hoodie, select Canada, past five years, and then apparel category. And then under related queries, you can see different related queries that people are also searching for with rising interest. For example, essential hoodies. And you can also view by the top related queries. And again, you can see something like Nike hoodie, men's hoodie, zip up hoodie, etc. And so you can get more specific product ideas under this product category. And second, you can also make use of the comparison features to double check if a product category is a really good one. For example, compare it with jacket. And now you can see obviously jacket has a much higher interest than hoodie. For example, winter jacket, leather jacket. And so you can use this feature to design some good product category with a good market amount in your view. Google Trends is a super powerful tool if you can fully utilize its features and use case. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing my channel so you can see more content like this. And lastly, make sure you check out my other video on how to build your content strategy step by step.